going to record to the computer. So, so welcome everybody. This is our UU Zoom training session. Um, I'm Eric Olson, and we got some other UU uh, Zoomies and Zoom wannabes here. So, thanks for coming. Um, I'll even start that out as a uh, as a as a point in the lesson. So, when we're doing the the Zoom service for the UU, um, and one of my aspirational goals here is to have you guys maybe help out with that occasionally, maybe, um, you know, be the, be the host or the sidekick that does these. Um, we do record the, the sermons. We record Rod, we just record Rod's part of the sermon. Um, hey, Andrea. So, um, so we're, uh, we're just sort of talking about recording. And so one of the things that we do is, is how to record now in Zoom, they give you two different options to record. And there's Ken Hill. Hey, so he, hey. He's, he's one of our recording experts. So Ken, I just um, I just hit the record button for this session that we can keep it and maybe share it with others if they want to learn some tips and tricks on Zoom. But I was just trying to explain what the protocol was for recording Zoom messages for the UU service that we do on Sunday. So how does that work? Um, basically, what you do is you just record it. Uh, I always record to my my computer. It gives you two. Cho it gives you choices. You can either record to your computer or to record to the cloud. It's when you just click on the little record button, right. and um, there are several files that get saved. Uh, and uh, on my Mac, uh, it actually opens that area. It's in. Uh, on my Mac, it's in whatever your personal saving space is. It's in Documents, and Zoom, then Zoom. That's where they get saved. And and then, it, 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 yeah, I, I was going to record this, and it says I need uh, Eric's permission. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, so, so generally the host is, is able to record. I don't know if the, the co-host can record. Let me, um, let me go ahead, and I'm going to try that. So right now, all you guys are, um, I'm the host, and then there's uh, all you regular folks out there. Uh, generally, what I think one of the best practices is, is make as many people co-host as are willing to co-host. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm going to go ahead and to, to make you a co-host, I just hover over your name. I open up your name in the participants list, and that pops you up on the right-hand side. And then um, I can just hover over your name and one of the pull downs allows me to make you a co-host. So I'm just gonna go ahead and make everybody a co-host at this point. So you can see, watch and see if you get any extra tools or any additional superpowers there. I can now record. I like the mute all one. Okay. I get that mute all button. Look out guys, that's my favorite. <laughs> Yeah. yeah that's, a da that's a dangerous one for you, I know. Well, you know, I'm on the grand jury and, and I was made the co-host so I could mute the people that talk out of turn without raising uh, their hand. And so yeah. I'm yeah. done with that now. I don't do it anymore. They've learned. All right. <laughs> so now, if you look, um, if you click on that, um, whoop, let me see here lost my view there's terry <coughs> all right so now um everybody should be a co-host at this point so if you um click on the participants button on the bottom of your zoom screen and then the participants panel sort of opens up on the right hand side and you can scroll up and down and so everybody has their name and then in parentheses, it says either host for me or it says co-host. So I guess, Ron, we were just sort of saying as a co-host, you know, some of your super, one of your superpowers is you can record as a co-host, right? Mm -hmm. Obviously, yeah, yeah. And, and Andrew, you have a, a question? My name is not there. Ah, on the bottom. I think it's on oh, I'm on just, list. sorry. I had a message come in and the message was covering it. My apologies. <laughs> okay. yeah, that's, that's, I, I think, you know, as we, as we do these Zoom meetings and try to do more often, 
um, you got to realize that, um, you know, that kind of stuff that happens to Andrea happens to all of us and trying to be very understanding <laughs> of people that are trying to do this Zoom thing. Um, I think it's just part of the nature of the, the beast here. Um, but but it, we all sort of chip in. Yeah, one, of, one of the things I'd, I'd like to encourage us, if we're, if we're helping out with facilitating uh, Zoom during the service, <clears throat> um, we, we kind of do this a little from a team. When she comes home, we'll talk about it. And, uh, you know, if you can, if you know something that I don't know, or, um, you know, you're on a, 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 a PC and I'm on a Mac, you know, sometimes the experience is a little different for everybody. And uh, if you can help us out, that would be great. Mm -hmm. um, so for this uh, meeting, we are recording. Uh, if you joined us a little bit late, hi, Alice. Hi, Rob. Good to see you guys here. Um, we're gonna, I'm going to talk to all kinds of different levels during this meeting. My main goal is to get more people who are capable of helping facilitate at the Sunday service, um, either before the service starts, during the service, or after the service. So just getting some, some general Zoom capabilities along those lines. And then beyond that, if you need some extra help or want to learn how to do something specific, uh, I think we could, we could probably help you out with that. <clears throat> um, so first off, uh, what, what we did so far is we talked about record. Um, and so everybody ought to have the ability to record now because you're a co-host. So if you want to um, look at those buttons on the bottom of your Zoom, you've got, uh, um, I've got pause, uh, stop, and record. Uh, Eric? Can you share the screen that you're looking at so that we can see what you're doing? You know, um, that is a higher skill level that I have not quite yet mastered yet, Terry, um, on how to do that. I will, um, I'll tell you what I will do though. This is a, this is a, a manual technique I have learned. Let me see. If I pull this. Yeah, one, one of the things that I've found, um, I'm, yeah, I, I should just try this at some point, and, and, you know, but the um, cool. when you're sharing your screen, I think that you can't share the actual zoom screen. Yeah, I mean, I don't think you can because that ends up in kind of like an infinite loop sort of arrangement. So you can share your screen as far as what, you know, like you want to share some slides or something like that. But I don't think you can actually share the what you're doing on zoom. Yeah, if it's there, there are some some um, third-party softwares that will allow you to do that kind of thing, um, and I would uh, there you go. Terry's Terry's sharing. Yeah. So. So, so we can see your desktop, but we can't. We can see. see we can't see. Yeah. The, your desktop. Right, but I, but I you can't see any of the control buttons. Oh, no, you can't. Yeah. So. No. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. there's a little bit of hand waving and describing that sort of goes on there. But anyway, if, if you want to try clicking those uh, record buttons, uh, let's say for the purposes of this meeting, there's nothing that you can do that would screw us up so much that we can't fix it or learn from it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if you, you want to hit that record button and see what it says or see what it does to you. Um, as co hosts does it allow you to record to your local computer. It does. That's what you I have did. the choice on this computer. Yeah, and, and just to understand, I yeah. Well, I, I just, I just want to mention is that um, if you do record to your local computer, like if you're recording for say an hour and a half or so, that's about uh, a half of a gigabyte or so. So it's it's not way huge for computers today, but it's it's significant. So if you're like really squeezed on space. Um, you know, and I record them every Sunday. So what I do is I actually move the video, which is the big, you know, there's several files that get saved. I move the video off my computer, you right. know. So. Yeah, I have, a, I have a little hard drive that I keep for big things that I want to get them off to my computer after a while, but. Where does it so, record to? It says to my computer, what part of my computer? Your hard drive. Yeah. yeah. It wound up being in the, in the downloads. Oh, download, okay. okay. No, no, it actually, it, it puts in a, a special Zoom folder. 
Yeah. If you search your computer for Zoom, um, you'll <clears throat> or, or like like Ken says, if you search your computer and you and you can have somehow sort files for size, it's where all these big files are. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I can tell you specifically where it is on the Mac. It's on, you know, you, you have your named area where you, where, you, where you, all your files for your name get saved. And if you bring uh -huh. it up in the finder, there's, that's like right at the front. And then you click on documents right. and then it's in Zoom. And I, I would suspect that on the uh, PC, it probably does the same because there's a generic documents folder. It probably does the same. It probably saves it in the documents folder under Zoom. There's a Zoom folder, and then you'll see all the folders for all the meetings that you go to. You're absolutely correct because I, I I misspoke when I said downloads because mine goes into Ron Vern, which is one section, then into documents, then yeah. into Zoom, and then into right. whatever. So um, so let's let's do just just kind of wrap up the discussion of of recording. So, so generally for the services, uh, we do want to record Ron's uh, or Rod's sermon. So that needs to be recorded. And generally we record that to the cloud, Ken, if, if I was doing it, because then somebody can go in afterwards and go get it. Yeah, but the problem is, is you need Rod's credentials to get at his cloud because it's his meeting. So then you would have to have his credentials to go get it there. So um, that's the reason I, and also I'm the one generally um, that, you know, reduces the audio file. There's a, there's a specific audio file that you need to give to people. Okay. Um, All right. So, 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 so that, um, that might be a, a sort of a special training or set of instructions. Yeah. Maybe cut, cut cover outside of this meeting then. and if you if you if you don't i'll tell you what if you're um doing this and and you're the i guess what what eric is saying is probably right go ahead and just save it to the cloud It'll you know be. and then and then uh, myself or whoever is is getting the podcast ready can just talk to rod and say hey i need the file and and get the file so mm -hmm. let's just make that a general policy is if you don't know exactly what to do or you want it, what you want to do just just save it to the cloud and then it makes sense for the sun for the for, for the cloud for Sunday for this one I know I'm recording to my computer and then I'll download it onto a stick but right yeah that question um can you use the word credentials obviously I know what the word means but what in terms of zoom zoom what are credentials <clears throat> Um, if, if I want to use, uh, you know, somebody else's account, um, then I, I need to have whatever they use to sign into Zoom so that I can basically be a host in their place. To that, okay, got it, thank you. That's a username okay. and password, right? Exactly, that's all it is, yeah, right. Yeah. The Zoom oh. address and password, is that what you said? The, no. The Zoom username, whatever username is used, and oh, a password. And password. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there is a host key as well. So the host key is generated by the Zoom profile when you have um, a corporate account. Right. For example, um, on the grand jury, we do a Zoom and we have the same credentials and we have the ability to set up meetings with those credentials but to change who's logged in as the host you need to know the host key and yeah. that's a zoom like yeah super credential yeah. it's a super yeah, and that's yeah like that that's beyond if any of you have like the first up that's it has to be a corporate account to be able to do that kind of stuff yeah. right i'm just saying just in case i don't know what kind of an account the uu has you know, kind of an but, intermediate one, isn't it? Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you. I'll tell you what. Let's. I'm going to kind of do a timeout and do the Good, yeah. thing here. I'm, I'm going to try to keep us just a little bit above the water. You know, right. everyone's a little dip down into the water, but I'm going to try to keep on moving us up. So uh, I, I first want to say say hello to uh, Rob and Alice. Um, you guys, I haven't really sort of talked to you in the context of Zoom facilitation. I've talked to Andrea a little bit. Um, are, are you guys, what, what kind of comfort level are you going to, or what, what are your aspirations in Zoom? <laughs> Survival, is that the deal? 
Well, your head's above water. Yeah. <laughs> my goal um, actually is to learn how to do it. Mm -hmm. um, reach out to my family, which is spread out all over the country. Yeah. Um, and, but I would be open, once I get more comfortable with it, I would be open to helping you guys out on Sundays on, yeah. on occasion. Well, excellent. Yeah, I, I think just, just wanting to be better or, or wanting to understand some of this is, is a good thing. Alice, how about you? Where, where, are, you, where are you on the Zoom for that? <laughs> Unmute. Yeah, if you lower left hand corner is a mute. Unmute. Yeah, I, it just took me a while to find it. Uh, I use Zoom all the time to connect with family and friends. Um, a little anxious about being responsible for do stuff, doing stuff on Sunday morning, but I, I figured I'd see how I felt at the end of this hour. Yeah, yeah. No, that's good. Thank you. Tuesday. Yeah. I, I'll, I'll just make one observation. We're using the church's Zoom account uh, for endowment committee meetings. Yeah. Okay. So since yeah. I've yeah. been the de facto Zoom host. <coughs> and I think, you know, this is where, you know, I, I think I like the idea of sort of starting out with the, the you know, the Sunday meeting sort of thing, but eventually, you know, the use of Zoom across all our different committees and things, having enough people sort of spread around that can do this kind of thing would be, would be wonderful. So let me, um, I wanna switch gears a little bit. Um, if you can see the, um, in the chat room, I have just typed a link. And that's something that you can do in order to get people to be able to do or go different places. So if you go ahead and click on that link, it will take you to a Google Doc, or at least that's my that's um, my theory. I'm not seeing it. it. I don't, I don't, don't see, see it. You don't see it? Not nope. yet. No. Let's see. So um, let's see. So if you hit the um, the chat button, yeah. Uh, so you guys mm -hmm. see the chat, right? Yeah, no, I no. have I have mine up, and it's not it's not there. Definitely. Oh, you know what? I'm I'm chatting to Donna Vermeklos privately. Oh my! <laughs> okay, that, that that's, good. that's a good. That, that's a, that's a learning you. experience. Yeah. 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 Watch where I go. Okay. Chat and chat, okay. Right. You can chat to everybody. You can chat privately, and yes. we can save this now. Which I knew it was working because I got it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah there's, uh, there's access to a Google Doc, and one nice thing. This isn't something that we've. Um, played with in the context of the service on Sundays or whatnot. But, you know, you keep the Zoom link open and then you can have people open up things like this Google Doc. And you can be paging and looking at that Google Doc or entering information. Um, let's see, share, done, done, okay. And you could, uh, we could sort of jointly edit this if we want, right? So if you were in the, you know some committee meeting and you wanted to jointly edit a document we could just go ahead and do that i'm going to go ahead and, and, and blow this up to 20 percent here but i want to use this as maybe an outline to um walk through and share our conversation is everybody able to open that google doc can you see it now at this point i can see it yeah i have it i'm not seeing i i see yeah, your yeah. link oh, but... i see it yeah let's see so give, give me a give me a Give me a thumbs up if you can get the Google Doc. Yeah, it says you use service Zoom experience suggestion slash help. There you go. Rob, how you how you doing? Can you get it? Um, I've got it, but I don't have the the uh, Zoom meeting on the screen now. Just a second, let me just close the email I used to get in. Yeah, you just maybe you need All to right. you guys are back, but I have to go back. I guess I have to go back and forth. Yeah. yeah. So what one thing I do with this kind of thing is because I have a big Apple screen here, I kind of spread the the Zoom meeting across the top of my screen, and then on the bottom of the screen, I'll have the the document window open or something, right? So I can you move can this up. You can do side by side with your screens if you want. That would be another thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, I question. Sure. Go ahead, Andrea. I've uh, I've opened. 
very easily and I have a side by side because I have a big screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I can't find a way to save that page. Um, there should be um, uh, on the, uh, if you go to the, the here, I'll, I'll tell you what, I am going to share screen on this because then I can show you guys. So mm -hmm. let's go ahead and share screen and I'm going to share my desktop. Okay. Right. So but here you see my desktop. So you ought to be able to get to this little file button in the upper right hand corner. Okay. And that says file. And then it should be like a probably you want to download and download mm -hmm. it as a Word doc or something that you're. Well, if you. Right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, the the thing is with the, the Google Doc, if you're if you have the capability of working on it, it's it's getting saved all the time. It, it's not it's it's a little bit different than you're used to, like you're working in Word. Am I correct in speaking that, Eric? Yeah, I'm not. I don't believe so. Yeah, you're actually right, Ken. Yeah. In Google Docs, if it's addressed to you, you've already got it. Yeah, but this isn't addressed to us. This is just, uh, uh, we just opened a website. So we have to save it to start the process. Exactly. You're right, Andrea. So that's, that's what can happen is okay. Eric can send us all an invite to this doc or share this doc with us, and then all of us will have access to it. He doesn't need to. He's just told us how to save it if we open it up. I, one, let's, let's look. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to bring us back up. So, yeah, Google Docs or something you can you can potentially share and learn to work with, but we're not going to we're not going to go that deep into the Google Docs part. What I wanted to do is just sort of show you in this document that you know you can get at this. You can this. I'll leave this here. This link will always work for you. But let's use this to sort of uh, come down and. Uh, walk through some of the things I would like you guys to be able to do and also help other people do <coughs> you, right? Eric, once once you showed this doc, I lost access to anything other than the Zoom screen. I can't get back to um, yeah to that document. Is that is that what's supposed to happen? <laughs> no, so so it it sounds to me, Alice, and, and I we've we've kind of been on meetings together before and, and <laughs> So, so I think we need to figure out how to get you so you can see like all the things that are open on your desktop. So if you, you know, across the bottom, um, like I have all the little icons and I have a Zoom icon, I have a Google oh, yeah. icon. And if you click on those little icons, it'll take you to different screens that you have open, right? Um, yeah, except it doesn't. Exactly. I, well, I think it's because we're still sh sharing Eric's screen. Oh, yeah. Nothing uh, yeah. on the screen except Eric's screen, and there is the row at the top. But yeah, yeah. If if we stop sharing your screen, we can do what you just said. Okay, I'm gonna. I'm gonna well, th there's another way you can is if you um, okay. is is if you like go Alt Tab if you're on a PC or uh, command tab on a, on a Mac, you can actually shift around to different edges of the application. <coughs> that, that's yeah, so a, another way. I had just reduced, I got out of full screen so that I could see my background screen. And there you go. That's and another way. If there are kids that I could. Um, Figure out something that works for you. Yeah. So, so I'm at, um, so if you're still got access in some way, shape, or form to that Google Doc, I want to um, suggest that maybe a convention we want to use so we can find and identify each other is to rename ourselves, right? If you're going to be a facilitator, and let's rename ourselves our an asterisk, space, your name, and then your location. So I'm going to model that. So do you guys know how to rename? Yeah. Yes. So if you hover over your Hollywood Square, if you're looking at the gallery view, and you get those that little box with the blue box with the three dots in the upper right hand corner, one of the pull down options is rename. Oh. Right. 
So rename yourself asterisk your name, and then um, I like to do a, a hyphen and then my vocation. What's the asterisk for? Well, so so one of the things that that happens when we're we're working is Zoom sorts alphabetically, right, in the participants folder, and so. If you got 80 people that are in the meeting, it's kind of nice to have all the facilitators' names up top, right? Okay. So all the people with the asterisk at the front of their rename will go to the top of the participants list, and it's easier to find them. So if I need help from Terry or I need help from from Ron or from Alice, <laughs> now they'll get. Is that right? Yeah. Of oh, you want the you want the place we're at too? Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Eric, I, I was wondering about the asterisk in front of your name on Sunday, Eric. Now I know. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah that, and, that Eric, and and Eric, it, it could be really any character, right? I mean, it doesn't need to be an asterisk. Right. You just have to all agree on what you're going to use to pull those people to the top of the list. Well, and one of the things okay. I, I will mention is is that the people that are hosts and co-hosts, um, they will come to the top anyway. Um, I've noticed on Sunday morning is, is that they, they, they automatically come to the top. Yeah. Um, and then the other thing is that I've noticed is that if you have everyone um, uh, muted, um, the people that are not muted um, hop up there as well. Um, you know, so uh, just and, go, go ahead. And if when you look at your participant screen, you raise your hand, it Zoom keeps track of who raised their hand first, really? which is kind of a handy little thing huh. Huh. for you because that way, if you have, you know, Robert's rules of order and they have to raise their hand, you don't get people mad at you because they got to wait in line. How do you raise your hand? <laughs> your participants. I knew that was going to be a question. <laughs> Go ahead, Eric. There is a raise your hands button. Yeah. So, so Terry, over on the, the participants list, um, yeah. got that pulled up underneath. Let's see. Um, if you're a host, you don't get the raise your hand button. Oh, you don't. you're right. So you that's don't. why all of you haven't got them. If yeah. you're a host or a co-host, you don't have to raise your hand. You right. can talk. I you have it just... under, under reactions. I have the thumb up sign. Yeah. Well, that's different. Well, that's different. Yeah, that's different. Yeah. Well, this yeah. So, so it's usually under the more, isn't it? I believe where you're. So, so here's 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 my thing, right? So this is a little pro tip for you guys that are going to be would be facilitators. Explaining p to people how to raise a hands is tough. <laughs> not that. Huh? You know, so some people like you know, and, and then uh, not only do you have yeah. to tell them how to do it, then you have to pay attention to it, and those are like two things that I've sort of said. You know what? Go like this, or like Andrea does, and say, hey, try to get my attention. Wave on your screen. You know, yell out, um, unmute yourself. Those are probably more effective for the kinds of things we're doing. If you're doing a Robert's Rules of Order thing, like grand jury thing, like Donna does, you know, that, that becomes maybe a critical feature. But for us, huh? let's, let's kind of put that on the, the medium advanced list for now. <laughs> Okay, but like now, well, now we know where the raise your hand button would be if we weren't co <laughs> where, where does the alert show up? Uh, let's see, you got an alert button, you mean, or what do you mean? No, when if somebody, somebody raises, raises their, their hand, hand, how do you know it? How, how do you know it? Because it's on the participants list. There'll be a little hand right next to their name. Oh, so you it always... Doesn't, it so doesn't, doesn't, it's it's not like a new chat, which... And now, well, let's let's since since we're there. So, so, what can you what can you click underneath the participants there? I can click a uh, invite. I can click a no. Mute I can all. Click a go slower. Go faster. So, if you click yes, yeah, I down. I clicked yes, and if you look at the participants list, my yes is up there. Yeah. Yeah. And, and if and, I and, click it again, it goes away. Right. So and, what happens when you have 80 some participants and you can't see this whole list? You, you, right. well, yeah. well, that's what happens. 
yeah, because what happens is, is if somebody, that's what goes to Terry's question about the alert, is that when somebody, you know, needs, so, you know, does something like that, no, it, don't they, if you noticed when Donna clicked yes, she hopped up immediately to the top of the list, you know. Um, that on mine. They're no, not on no, mine. She didn't. No. no, she didn't. I'm sorry. Donna's, Donna's not on my list of participants at all anymore. Well, it's because if you scroll down a little bit, you'll, you'll no. see. No. No. Okay. Hey, I'm hiding. She's there. I uh, am. The same, uh, okay. What, what, once again, let's let's let's. Okay. Go yeah. And, uh, this is me, probably medium advanced. As we, if we're having trouble with it, people at the fellowship are going yeah, to go nuts. Let's, yeah. let's, let's not let's not do this in our fellowship for now. Um, <laughs> so if I, I'm going to the Zoom doc. Okay. So we did like the rename. Um, if you look at, I've got some things, uh, you use service uh, Zoom experience suggestions. Uh -huh. Let's make this a better experience for everyone, right? So I'm just gonna go down this list and let me know if there's some things we need to talk about. One thing you'll notice, um, I usually keep this list in a, in a Word doc open up on my desktop so that I can sort of, as a facilitator, I can just sort of cut and paste these things and put them in the chat room, right? Mm -hmm. so Eric, could you put the link back? I've my I've lost mine. Thanks. Sure, sure. Hang on a second. Let's see, share, copy link, and yeah, yeah and, that, and that's one thing about the the chat in Zoom is if you go out and come back in or people come late, they can't see the things that were in chat. Yeah, and I saw Just that link, I, it disappeared on me again. I didn't get to copy your link. Okay, I should be able to. I can't get the, oh, let's see, wait a minute. Maybe I hid the chat somehow. I, yeah, I slid it over. Okay, never mind. I just slid the chat out of my view. Yeah, here, I'm gonna, uh, uh, I'm gonna go, go to share screen so it's a little bit easier for me to, this all right so um what one reason i i um share screen is just you know if, if i share screen i know what everybody's looking at um but but generally one of the things you're trying to i don't know give people in this sort of zoom environment is some sort of feeling of self-control right where like they can look at their own screen or however they want to set it up um I think there's something to be said for that. So anyway, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go through the, the little list of, of what I think would be um, things to help people do. So as a facilitator before the service or something, um, we might wanna put some of these things in the chat or sort of talk to them about how to do it. So one of my things is, um, you know, just type in, you know, if you're a visitor, welcome, say hello in the chat. It'd be really nice if if people when they came, they just you know typed in that they were a visitor and said hello. And this could be the equivalent of when we're doing greeting with people walking in physically into our space in a church, right? So I think that would be a nice thing. Now I'm not going to advocate what we do with that information and what we do with this chat afterwards, but we could potentially build a list of visitors, right? And then the next thing is we've already played with this, um, rename yourself. So everybody ought to be able to rename themselves um, in, the, in the thing. And there's sort of two, two purposes to that. One is so that we get to know people and some people have some, you know, the screen name might be, you know, Dick's iPad or, you know, there's, there's different, what your computer thinks your name is and then what your really your name really is. So I think renaming it um, is helpful. And then later on, we use that to be able to put people into breakout rooms and whatnot too. So we'll talk about that a little bit, okay? Um, before you, go, before yeah, you go, go, much, go ahead, Andrew. Yeah. Before you go much further, the previous one, if you're a visitor, welcome, could we, could you also add, if you're comfortable, tell us your address, so tell where you're from. Because as, as membership chair, I'm sending out information to them, even now. Right. 
And sometimes I don't know who they are or where they're from. Just yeah. a thought. Um, no, I, 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 I like that. Um, my, my comment would be is we're always walking a little bit of a line between being open. You know, I understand, open. yes. And then, you know, so what I would do, Andrew, is, is maybe private chat with that person. Yeah, that's what I've been trying to do. Okay, that's fine. I just thought I'd raise it. So no, I, I, yeah, but, I like that. Go ahead. but there's another thing that we need to do. Um, and and uh, Terry brought this up, and I, I tried putting some stuff into here about it. But what is when we do the recording, um, it also records the chats. You know, and um, I think that we need to be, uh, we mentioned it in the very beginning, but we need to let people know that the, that the chats are recorded and even private chats are also recorded. Oh, you know? They are. So, there, yeah. so there, there really is no privacy in the private, private chat. It only keeps you from, uh, you know, from interrupting or interfering with other people. That's all so it, it does. It doesn't broadcast. No. It doesn't broadcast to everyone, but but in the recording, um, it will show up. Thank you. But well, only the people who have recorded it would ever be able to see it. Uh, correct. Yeah. But anybody that recorded it would see it. So so yeah, and and, and my understanding of, of of how that that functionality works is if I I've got my chat you know experience for me sort of personally. If I copy that chat, I will get all my private chats will be there. Yes. When the Zoom meeting itself is, is recorded to the cloud, right, Ken mentioned that there's several files. One of the files is a chat file. And I'm not exactly sure if any of the private stuff goes into it that. It does. Recorded Absolutely chat. for sure it does. Okay. So, um, yeah, so you got to watch out for that. But I won't necessarily see if, if if Ken and Gina were, were typing things back and forth in the chat, um, I would not see that unless I went to that master file, you know, in the thing. So, so the, the, everybody else's experience would, would normally not to, not to be able to see that, right? Right, correct. I, I have another question. Sure, go ahead, Terry. When we're in the breakout rooms, how does recording work? Um, I, I believe the recording is just local to that breakout room. So you can record your own computer, your experience in that breakout room, and nobody else will see that. I don't know what happens at the cloud level, though. Can I'm, you... I'm quite sure, although I'm not absolutely sure, is that the, is that the recording is actually recording now I'm I'm at about a 75 80 percent confidence level on this so I could be wrong but I think that what the recording does is it records what you're doing on your computer you know in, in other words if you are recording and you go over to a breakout room or you are in um, speaker view that's the view you're gonna get recorded on your video and stuff right. Yeah, like on the look, I think the way it works, Terry, is when you record to your computer, it's recording your local experience. So if you got gallery view or speaker view or whatever you're sort of seeing locally is what it's recording to your local computer. When you record to the cloud, it generally, I think it only records the main room experience, right? Because I've got recordings of me sitting up there at that top level. Everybody else is in breakout rooms, and you know you're, you're watching me and my TA sort of chat to each other. You know, and that's all that's recorded at the top level. Right? Does that make sense? Sort of helpful. Thank you. Okay. All right. So, um, yeah. So we've we've got this thing where we're um, visitors. We're trying to rename yourself. Uh, mute and unmute. People seem to understand that pretty well. Lower left hand corner, you know, just, you know, do your microphone or not. There are always other ways to do things in Zoom. Um, I try to look for the easiest one to describe people um, how to do that. Um, one thing that would be nice, um, and this is sort of similar to what Andrea was sort of talking about, um, you can take attendance in chat. So have everybody uh, type in you know, their name and maybe their location or some piece of information. 
and put it in a chat room is a, is a nice thing to do. Um, it would be nice if everybody that came every Sunday would just sort of type their name into the chat and then we'd have a, a record of that sort of information. But uh, I kind of put it in there as optional. Once again, it's, it's would you like to share with people you know, that you were, uh, you were in attendance at the church that day. Um, so uh, one of the things that I've been on a, a little vendetta for, this is something I didn't know early on in my uh, Zoom experience, but you can change view options. So right now, if you go to the, um, your toolbar at the top of your screen, you should have something that says view options, right? And if you click on view options, you go down, you'll find something called side by side mode, right? So if you want to go ahead and click on that, so find view options, find side by side mode, and then click on that. And what what will happen then is you'll see the screen that, that I'm sharing with you. And then on the right hand side, you will see some uh, person's picture or video. And that video on the right hand side, you can actually change that. If you go up to the top, I forget it's speaker and gallery. Yeah. It's the same way that you can go between speaker view and gallery view, you can go ahead and change that. Okay. And then the other thing that's that's nice about this that I like, if somebody's showing me a, a boring slide that only has a couple words on it, you can grab that sort of, uh, there's a little um, middle bar between what I'm sharing on my screen and all the, um, the, the views of the video. Mm -hmm. And you can slide that little bar left or right and it will make the shared screen bigger or smaller, and you can see the um, the videos either bigger or smaller. Does everybody is everybody experiencing that or seeing yeah, that? Yeah, damn, I never saw that before. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I I can move it, but it's not changing the size of anything. Um, interesting. Uh, so, um, let me. Uh, you see the divider between everybody <laughs> on the right and the Google Docs on the left? Yeah. I, yeah. So, Andrew, are you, are you, are you, do you see the desire? You can slide that. Is the slide getting smaller and bigger or no? No. It's next to view options, right? Um, it's, it, well, no, it should be like, no, it's at the options. Yeah. You click on view options, there should be a, a pull down menu. Uh huh. One of the one of the options in the pull the bottom is side by side. I, I am I always use side by side. Yeah. yeah okay. I do too. All right. Well, well, maybe that's yeah. I have that as my default. So that's I always do. I have. Yeah. But the, the the bar at the top, as I said, I move, but nothing happens. Uh -huh. Yeah. So, so Andrea, no. if you go to the middle of the document screen you'll see three little lines on the right hand side and then a gray line will go all the way up and down the side and if you drag that those three little hash marks that are on the right hand side of the screen don't, don't have them anywhere yeah i don't have them either but when i put my mouse in between the two yeah. strings, I oh, got them. Yes. Line. Ah, yes. Hooray. That's it. thank you alice yes <laughs> okay yeah so this is the thing is yeah you have your own experience and then everybody's computer sometimes is just sort of slightly different so um let's great. see that's great yeah, the next the next one you can switch between speaker view and gallery view. Um, I think everybody knows how to do that. Um, gallery view sometimes we call it the Hollywood Squares or the Brady Bunch view, um, depending on how old you are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think I got the oldest. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, let's see. Then I I put in a line about sound levels. So one of the things that as a facilitator, if you show up before the service. You know, Rod, um, you know, solicits one of us to help him with doing a sound check. 
So he goes through all the different slides and Alba singing and um, <clears throat> children reading the mission statement and the uh, covenant and those sorts of things. And we do a sound level check. But um, I thought I'd put this note in the, in the chat as sort of a standard note because people sometimes complain about you know, whether that it's too soft or too loud and you can right. control that locally a little bit, right? Um, and then just some, the last one is just some instructions for folks so that, um, you know, you should have some light coming on your face. Yeah. So just, you know, this is a sort of a pro tip sort of thing. So this is my, my setup here, right? So I've got, I got a couple big lights in front of my computer, um, just to, just to throw some light on my face so that people can see my my wonderful expression and whatnot um, you don't you don't have to do that you just need to not be you know backlit with a bunch of windows open behind you so that you know your your face is dark right um kind of like dix is now um let's, let's see how you I, I have the sun right here what are you talking about yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's, it's funny <laughs> Central Beach is very sunny right now. Yeah. That's the sunniest I can get. How's that? Yeah, that's that's good, Dick. You're, you're fine. So, so even the the thing is like I've got a a window on my side over here, and I find that I have to close that side window, and then use this in order to you know balance things out. So you you, you have to play with it a little bit if you're serious about this. But I also think it's a it's a nice respectful thing to do, right? Actually, there's the sun right there. Yeah, yeah. Just just be conscious of where the light's coming from, and and you should be good. All right. So with that, I want to I want to um, talk about talk about the really tough thing, which is breakout rooms. You bet. Is everybody ready to move on to breakout rooms? This is the yeah. Point. Okay. So if you scroll down that document, I'm going to go ahead and stop share. I'm going to talk about breakout rooms. So so breakout rooms. One of the things about that is you have to be a host to do breakout rooms, all right? And what I think I want to do to, to get you sort of familiar with this is I want to make you the host for the meeting, and then you're going to be able to see the breakout room buttons, and we're going to ask you to put people in the breakout rooms and, and take them back out in order to practice this a little bit, okay? So we've generally been having some pretty good luck after the service of putting people into breakout rooms. And the main mode that we use is the random mode. And when you, when you click on this button, just tell people a little bit of what's gonna happen in advance. The, um, so I'll, I'll click on mine just so I can see what it says here. <laughs> um, you'll see um, a button, one says automatic, automatically, the other says manually. And you could say um, how many rooms you want. And it'll automatically tell you how many people are going to be per room. And it does the math for you. So you don't have to count how many people are in the thing. It'll just automatically tell you how many are in each room. And uh, let's first try the, the automatic function. And then we use the manual function when we want to do those numbered breakout rooms. So we were took, putting people in breakout rooms on voting last Sunday. You know, we needed people to number themselves in their rename. It's another reason to learn rename and we'll do manual. But let's start out with the automatic. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna start out and uh, let, uh, let Terry experience this a little bit. So Terry, I'm gonna make you the host. And now, Terry, you should have a, a thing that says breakout rooms on the bottom on your toolbar, mm -hmm. right? If you look, there should be a, something that says breakout rooms. You get that? Yeah. Okay, so click on that breakout rooms. So, so if I choose three rooms and say automatically, since there are nine of us, yeah. it should be three participants, two to three participants per room, it says. Right. You want to ch change the number of rooms so you can see what happens. So I can see what happens? 
Yeah, so you can see what happens since you're the host. Well, when I changed it to two, it says four participants, but that only makes a total of eight. Or does the host get left? Yeah, out? The host, the host isn't. The host gets left out. Okay. That's the way it works. All right. So okay. Toby, I'm gonna. Um, since you're the host, we're gonna play past the host here. This is kind of a Catholic sort of thing. I apologize for that. But um, why don't you make Ron Sampson the host so he can sort of see what that button looks like. I'll surrender my privileges. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so hover over Ron's thing. Um, you do the pull down and, and then you got to make him the host. Can you do that? I've, I've done that. Ron, are you seeing the breakout? I am. I am now host. Okay. Uh, where is the breakout room? The breakout room is on the bottom there. It's for window pane. It's a window pane. Yeah. So you see it? Do you got a button for breakout rooms, Ron? Uh, I'm not seeing it. It's on the bottom of your Zoom. Um, I see the, the bottom. Keep it like next uh, to it's under more. Breakout, it's under more. Okay. Man, under the three dots. Yeah, if you get, Maybe if your screen is too small, it, it puts it there. It could be because I did shrink it up a little. Okay, so why don't you why don't you go ahead and click on that button so you can kind of see how many rooms, right? So you got you got. Okay, there I did. I made my picture bigger, and all of a sudden, breakout rooms showed up. Yeah, so yeah. click on breakout rooms. Yep, and you got the the little thing. You can see how. Okay. The, Automatically assigned or. Uh, manually, okay. So manually change the number of rooms just so you okay. can see. Okay, three. And you see the number of participants per room. room. Yep, there you go. All right. And then if I hit create breakout rooms, it will just everybody will go there at that point. Well, well, well um, they, they get asked if they want to go. Yeah, they get asked yeah. if they want to go. So, so let's let's go to Andrea. Let's go ahead and, and make Andrea the host here. Okay. We'll have Andrew, actually, um, we'll have you put us in the breakout room so we can see what that experience feels like. Okay. Okay. So hover over okay. Andrew. Where do I hover to make her host? Uh, participant column, or I think you can do the Hollywood Square. Oh, okay. Uh, let's see. I think on her pull down on her Hollywood Square, you should be able to make her the host, too. If you, hit yeah, her, if you click on her three dots, Okay. You'll be able to make her the host. Make that's host, it. yes, okay. That's how I made you the host. That's good. Well, Andrea, I can make you either the host or the queen. Let's make you the host. <laughs> well, actually, the queen. There you go. Oh, right. Elizabeth's going to say about that. So, Andrea, <laughs> can you see the, the breakout room button there in the yes, bottom? I can, and I click on that. Yep, click on that. And once and you go I've ahead. got automatic or manual, and I can change rooms. I'm going to say, uh, four three four okay and create breakout rooms and i've got my breakout rooms yes yeah so so why don't you why don't you do two breakout rooms okay how do i go go back there um breakout rooms breakout rooms okay now i've still got four so i recreate is that better recreate got it okay now i've got two two and then hit hit go or whatever it says recreate. What I've got two. Okay, I've got two now. Okay. Does does it say like go or create rooms? I think it says know? recreate. Shouldn't shouldn't be recreate. So re, what recreate is doing is giving you the same rooms, but it's shuffling the people. I think. No, it, it didn't. It went from four rooms to two on mine. It yes. went from four rooms to two rooms. All right, but but we, we but we. I'm trying to get you to go ahead and actually do it. So I want everybody to get an invitation to join a breakout room. Is that I would, the, the one the only thing that's blue is the recreate right andrea we go back because i didn't notice the color um uh the recreate it's 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 gray with it's highlighted and yeah. it, so all existing rules will be replaced if i, I would, change the that's number that's what i would do i would, well, I would incidentally i'm no at the bottom it says recreate all rooms in blue but, but but I don't think it's given us the all right. So so I'll tell you what, Andrew, let's let's kind of leave this from here. We need somebody to to sort of talk us through this. Could you can you make yeah. Ken the uh 
the breakout room. Oh, well, let me get out of that. But get out of that. Get out of that. And I go into what to Ken? Did he say? Yeah, if you hover uh, over, yes. Ken, yeah, make, um, make me the host. Assign, make us. There you go. There you go. Okay, Ken. Okay, great. And I believe that what happened probably there is that the breakout rooms were, were actually created. I think yeah. that, that, and then it's recreating them, um, which is kind of cool. I've never done that before, but. Um, right, that's, that's so, exactly what happened. Yeah, okay, great. And so I'll it was just telling us, so uh, yeah. right now it's saying, Can go ahead, Eric. I was just gonna say one thing quickly now that Ken, uh, Andrea and I are no longer anything, not even co-host, let alone host. Yeah, right. we are, but, sorry. Right, because, and that's a good note, but because what happened is, is because your the duties when they, when you got that pulled away, now the new host has to give you Great. back. Oh, your okay, host. okay. So I can do that. Um, so Ken, why don't you just put us in the breakout rooms and then? Um, it's fine. Take, yeah. Take, yeah. Take us. Show show people the. Okay, so it just says down here, it says create breakout rooms. So I'm gonna hit that and I will not be in any of your breakout rooms. So I'm right. gonna do that now. And I'll stay at the top level. And then when I click that, it pops up with another um, thing that shows who's gonna be in what breakout room. Right. And then it says open all rooms right. at the lower right. So okay. go ahead and open all here rooms. Here we go. <laughs> And I'm going to tell you if you can go join. Ahead, go, ahead, go, ahead, go ahead, everybody join the room. I'm going to click later. And then Ken, close the rooms right away because it's 60 seconds, right? right? So go ahead and close the room so they get the message there. Um, you might want to send them a, a message in the breakout. Do you want to type a message? Hope you're doing it. Um, I don't think I can do that. You yeah. have to go actually go to the breakout rooms. No, you sh there should be a thing where you should be able to broadcast all, isn't it? Like one of the breakout oh, rooms. Oh, maybe. Nope. It's the only thing on my chat. The only thing is, it's just, just you know, you and uh, everyone. No, it's not on chat. It's on the breakout room menu. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, all right. Well, that was fast. Welcome back, everybody. <laughs> uh, question. Can you change how long the meeting time is, the breakout session is? Well, no, that's, that's actually, uh, you end it by uh, clicking the uh, close the breakout rooms, and then it gives the 60 second warning to everyone. So you, the host, does that? Correct. So you, you can actually, let it go on longer if you want it. Yeah. Correct, which is what right. I, yeah. And then you can also, what you can do as host, although it doesn't put you in a breakout room, you can actually go around and you can join the various breakout rooms and then you can leave them and come back to the main room if you want. So you can actually go visit people in the breakout rooms as a host if you want to. Mm -hmm. That's good for a workshop. Yeah, it is. So, yeah, so, yeah. so Ken, while we're talking, why don't you give some other people some chances to try this out? Sure. Robin, Robin, Mary, you want to be made sure. there? Yeah, okay. Um, let me make you the host here. And just by the way, that when you say to change, make people a host, that pops up um, a dialogue that you have to say change host. Yeah. So I've, so I've gotten distracted and not forgotten that was up there and not. <laughs> so, so one thing I noticed when we were in the breakout room is yeah. that we can't chat with the host. So you would have to leave, is, is this, this is a question. Needed to chat with the host, you'd have to leave your breakout room. Correct. Chat with the host. Right. Correct. Go to a breakout and, and, room. And Terry, Correct. when we say you have to leave to go talk to the host, there might be a way that you can, you know. So, yeah. But, but we don't know how to. So. Right. Can you get back in that same breakout room then? Yeah. It so will. In fact, it's, it's it's locked in there unless you. I, I I've just started to look at it, and I don't really know a lot about it. There's a recreate. I think that's what the recreate is for. You get locked into the breakout rooms. You think about like in a conference or something, you usually get assigned a breakout room with a particular group, and then you want to go back to that same group, you know, subsequently. Well, but you know. Rob, go, go ahead and send, send, 
So my observation was I have the button that lets me leave the breakout room, and that would take me back to the main room. And I think we've said earlier, when you're in the main room, you can choose which breakout room you go to. Right. But the host oh, has to do it. So let's, let's uh, I see Rob and Mary are, are intently staring at their screens there. So, so Rob, do you want to you go ahead and push that, that, that breakout room button? Yep. Yeah. Okay. And then. Um, I see right. open all rooms, add a room, recreate yeah. option. Yeah. So I think. $200? Yeah. Sally King's going to combine, pick it up. I was. Um, so so what, what, what are the options across the, the bottom, the things that you can do? It says options, and in there, move all participants into breakout rooms automatically, allow them to return to the main session at any time, right. breakout rooms close approximately after X minutes, right. um, countdown after closing breakout room, countdown timer 60 seconds. Yeah. So look, that's what you get under options. Right. And there's recreate, add a room, and open all breakout rooms. That one is. So, so I think if like. you click open all breakout rooms, I, I think it will just put you back in the same ones. Correct. But and he could recreate, recreate the rooms if he like wants. There's a shuffle, right? We'll shuffle you again. So, Rob, why don't you, you know, um, figure out how many rooms you want and then go ahead and put us in breakout rooms. I'll stay at the top level. So, I don't see where it gives you. Oh, well, there's. I see four, breakout room one has four people and breakout room two has two people, but I don't see anything that tells me I can create. Right, you would, I, think, I think for you to get the same experience that I had, like at the very beginning, or Andrea had at the very beginning, I think you would hit recreate because okay. we, we already did that. Right, okay, then, you can pick then it says uh, you've got two rooms, one room, Right. Three rooms automatically, manually. Right. Yeah. So we create all rooms. Yeah. I just hit that. Now we've got three rooms. Okay. And I'll hit open all rooms. There you go. And and everybody, you go. join a room and then come right back. Okay. So just join the room and then come on back. So Rob, you you can see, um, you can kind of see there. You can do some broadcast. You should. If you open up that breakout room, you know where everybody went, uh -huh. and you can change like where they're assigned to. You could assign them to a different room if you wanted to, right? How right. do you do that? Yeah, I think this is starting to make a bell ring in my head about something I talked to you about, Eric, a number of months ago when I was doing the hosting for the whole day, and I've yeah. never seen since. Um, the <laughs> <laughs> Having to do with breakout rooms, uh, there was um, if you put people in a breakout, if you practice when you first start the meeting, and then it worked beautifully. Right. Then I came back, and then at the end of the service, tried to put people in me in breakout rooms. And so yeah. I left. It was remembering what you did before, and now you had eighty people when before you only had like fifteen, right? Yeah, yeah. So it was. You know, a lot of people didn't get put in rooms, and no. everybody is really laughing at you, Ron. They thought you were the most hysterical breakout room manager they had ever seen. <laughs> I know. Uh, okay, so I, I uh, felt so proud. Yes, I'm I'm back in the main room now, but I have, even though I'm not the host, I have an icon that says breakout rooms, and if I click on that, it says you have been assigned to breakout room one. And the only thing I can do is go back to room one. Right. So, so, so the way that you yeah. can sort of think about this or use this is if you're the host setting up breakout rooms, everybody goes off to their breakout rooms. You're staying. It's usually a best practice. Somebody stays at the top level to to uh, take care of lost sheep or people that wander in. Well, well the host has to, right? No, you don't have to. Well, well you're in, the host can join any breakout room. Oh, you know, they can. They, they can join any breakout room, and I do that sometimes because I invite people to, when we have this random thing, I invite people, if they want, to just, you know, they can either join the breakout room or they can just stay in the main room. So, um, 
Aren't there people usually up. some people stay in the, there's a few people stay in the main room anyway, aren't there usually? Yeah. yeah. So, but right now, oh, 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 Andrea, yeah. Terry, right yeah. now, Andrea and Dick can't hear the chat we're having. Yeah. Yeah, let's, let's we, were, we were waiting for Terry to come back. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Rob, can you close the breakout rooms just to yep. make sure? Yeah. It's, uh, I forgot we got these people sitting there in. Uh, <laughs> and, 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 and we're so cruel. Cool. <laughs> what you can actually do, if you want to, Rob, is you can actually go join that room. You can see who's in it and who's not. And you can actually see that there's one person hanging out there. You can actually go join that room and say, um, just go ahead and leave the breakout room now. You know, so the host can actually wander around in the breakout rooms if you want. And there's also a way for the host to broadcast a message to the, to the, well, to the breakout rooms if they want. So, all right, I there we go. I, I just think we're going to the next grade level here. Yeah, okay, so. I, I just wanna mention one really quick thing and then I'll shut up. Is that the, uh, just in the chat, the chat works always. You know, I mean, you can broadcast to everyone. Everyone can always talk to everyone in the chat even if you're in the breakout room. Oh, okay, okay, good to know, good to know. All right, um, I, I think that's really, for this one session, you know, we, we're now at a, you know, an hour and six minutes. I think that's plenty of Zoom training for now. Hopefully you guys are just a little bit more comfortable and you know, there's not much you can break or really sort of screw up. We'd love to have you help out with, um, you know, facilitating and, what not either before or after if somebody asks you to be the the host for the service uh, hopefully you you now can do a breakout room if you yes. needed to right Andrew, but the only thing bad that can happen i think is when we were doing ga and we had several meetings of the people that were working on that before the meeting before ga started and somebody inadvertently uh hit <laughs> in the meeting and <laughs> Well, that's, so that's that's about the worst. Yeah, that's it, you know, and if you are the host, and it wasn't me. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Let me, let me just. I have a that. quick question. Then um, I have a Zoom account for a, a group which is not a church group, right. and they asked me how they can um, put a background behind instead of like my study, and right. I don't know how to do that. Uh, <laughs> so maybe I can talk to you privately, but it seems it's simple yeah. to do. I just haven't figured it out. It is, and sometimes you can't do that. So you can talk to me. I run a virtual background because I have a, a light, right, a mirror right behind me that reflects the bright sun in there. And so, you know, that, that's how I get it. Yeah. So we'll, okay, we'll talk. Okay, thank you, Ken. Yeah, right. and I have a Zoom account also, so we can set it up and actually play around with it if you okay. want Okay. So, so this is sort of a, a, a best practice in Zoom meetings. Don't if you schedule the meeting to go till three o'clock, don't just keep on going. You got to give, you got to at least give people an escape route, right? So anybody needs an escape, you know, back well, I had one. that's fine. And, but, but we can also stay around and chat afterwards if you need a little extra help or whatnot too. Okay. Um, Andrew, it's real similar to, you know, students come up to you after class and right, right. Mm -hmm. there's a line of people with questions. You try to take the shortest questions first to the longest question, you know, is it sort of the way to do if it? You, if they know the question. If they know the question. Exactly. This was very, very, very helpful. Okay, I'm going to hit stop recording. So, um, so we're not recording.